Hey everyone, you're about to learn how to structure your MMA and gym training like a professional athlete. My name is Jack Crucial. I help athletes get out of pain and injury and return to elite performance. To be a successful mixed martial artist, you need to have a strong foundation of both strength, speed, power, and endurance production. Not only this, but you need to stay on the mats for as long as possible and train as consistently as possible. So rest and recovery between sessions and across weeks are just as vital as well. And it all comes down to one specific aspect, and that is structuring your programming intelligently. Planning and structuring phases of your training allows you to train harder for longer, as well as recover more effectively so that you're staying on the mats for as long as possible. Why not use the same systems that the best fighting athletes in the world are using? And I'm going to give you this exact framework. I see far too often extremely stupid training structures where people are trying to train hard five to seven days a week. This is not gonna allow you to have the longevity that you need to perform at your best for long periods of time. The first concept that we are going to cover is maximum recoverable volume. This is the amount of training an athlete can complete until they reach their physical limit. Going beyond this limit can lead to increase of injury risk, decrease in performance, and reduce recoverability session to session. We should be improving week on week in an ideal setting and if you're constantly training above your maximum recoverable volume, it's going to be really difficult to continue to improve your performance. What are some of the signs that you are training above your maximum recoverable volume? One of those signs is that your gym lifts are stalling. So across two or three weeks, you're either stalling within your gym lifts or they're starting to regress. When you're completing, whether that's grappling, striking sessions, whatever the case is, also subjectively feels like you're performing worse and worse week after week. You also might feel run down, you might be getting sick all the time. These are really common signs that we're training above our capacity. So how to track your maximum recoverable volume? There's two ways of doing this. There's a more meticulous way that you can integrate and there's also an easier, simple way if you're not wanting to spend a ton of time dialing this in. So the meticulous way first and foremost, really breaking down session by session exactly what you're doing. In a gym context, you can calculate total volumes by utilizing the weight that you're lifting, times by the sets that you're doing, times by the reps that you're doing. So you can have a total volume calculated and the beauty of gym training, it is very, very easy to track the way that we're doing things. In terms of MMA sessions, it's a little bit more difficult. However, we can split it up into two particular domains. The first domain would be hard sparring, hard rolling and things like that. And the second domain would be more so technical work, whether that's uh, grappling drills, whether that's pad work, whether that's shadow boxing. So you can really split these apart and you can also factor in the amount of rounds you're doing per week or the total duration of each of these modalities. Now you don't need to dial things in this much. It could simply be a matter of tracking the way that your lifts are progressing. And it's very easy to do this as well as just seeing subjectively how you feel about your performance week on week within an MMA context. If you feel like you're either stalling or getting worse and worse, from a performance standpoint, your roles are getting worse, your sparring is getting worse, it may be wise to look at the amount of sessions you're doing and potentially start looking at removing or restructuring the way that you're training. One of the biggest benefits of strength conditioning is you can improve your work capacity over time. Somebody who's a very experienced trainer within the domains of MMA and the gym is going to be able to do a lot more work than a beginner in these domains. And this is the whole reason why strength and conditioning is so important regardless of your sport, especially if you're a fighter, the more work that you can do, the harder that you can train, the more that you can develop these skill qualities over time. That is the number one benefit of doing strength and conditioning on top of the MMA training that you're doing. High and low periodization. Charlie Francis is a legendary sprint coach and he is somebody that used this exact training principle a ton. So it's splitting high intensity training loads with low intensity training loads and staggering those across the week accordingly. I'm going to show you specific examples if you're both a casual MMA athlete as well as somebody who's prioritizing MMA completely. But the purpose of periodizing things in a high and low fashion is it allows athletes to push themselves on these high training days such as sparring, hard rolling, these sorts of rounds, but also allows the athlete to build technical proficiency on the lower days and allows adequate rest between high intensity efforts. Essentially, this principle allows you to train up towards peak performance, but also improve your recovery between sessions as well as minimize your injury risk. So you're getting all the benefits of hard training whilst minimizing the risk of injury so that you can continue to train consistently. This is the number one cornerstone to getting better at anything. 
not just mixed martial arts, not just stronger in the gym, it's staying consistent and not missing time on the mats because you're constantly injured. The biggest advantage that you have as a mixed martial artist is you can make really good use of these low intensity days that you have. As an example, you can improve your technical proficiency when it comes to shadow boxing, partner drilling within a BJJ context and really work and drill certain areas that you have weakness points. It's very rare to have a sport where you can train at really low intensities and get really tangible benefit just because of how technical the sport of mixed martial arts is. So use this to your advantage. This is something that most athletes commonly avoid. They don't do enough shadow boxing. They don't do enough drilling. Use these opportunities to become a better mixed martial artist. Here are the guidelines that you can utilize to structure your training week. Whether you're just dabbling in MMA or you're training as an amateur or even professional fighter, you can use these same guidelines. I've also included over half a year of injury prevention circuits that you can do immediately after MMA sessions and it's in the link in the description below. I've also added eight weeks of neck training which are one of the most common injury areas as a mixed martial artist that you can also access for free. I wanna keep as many of you in the ring and on the mats as possible, so these resources will really help you to do that. So now I'm going to give you two examples of how to structure your entire week, whether you're an amateur or professional MMA fighter, and I'll also give an example if you're mainly just dabbling in MMA and want to structure your programming so that you're optimizing for your gym performance. So. So let's start by categorizing our training sessions. The high sessions would be max effort, strength conditioning, tends to be lower body in nature, hard sparring, sprints and explosive jumps, anaerobic conditioning and heavy bag rounds. Our low sessions would be technical sparring, shadow boxing, zone to aerobic conditioning and drilling. So here are the four steps to programming your specific MMA training for the week. We're going to start by adding the high intensity sessions first, the MMA based high intensity sessions. Most gyms have fixed timetables, so we need to work around this. We can add gym training days any day that we need to, so this allows us, let's start with the fixed variables. As you can see, let's use an example. We've got hard sparring, we've got heavy back rounds, and we have hard wrestling rounds. Once we have these in place, try and select classes that are as far apart from each other as possible. So in this example, we've done a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, where we've got high intensity sessions. Now, something that tends to confuse people at the start is that I've added hard strength conditioning on those same days. The reason that I've done this is so that we can dedicate a full day to high intensity activity. So as a result, on the Wednesday, we've added our first strength and conditioning session so that that entire day is a full high intensity day. This gives us much bigger breaks instead of us, as an example, putting that strength conditioning session on the Thursday where we don't have adequate recovery between hard sessions, we're treating an entire day as a high intensity day instead. It's a much smarter way for us to better recover session to session. What we do from there is add one dedicated day of rest and then fill every other spot up with lower intensity exercise. You'll see as an example on the Tuesday, we've got shadow boxing rounds and light pad rounds. On the Thursday, we have grappling, 60% um, intensity rolling, light positional specific training. You can do some injury prevention stuff with the combat circuits. And then Saturday, we have either off, some additional MMA conditioning, things of that nature. So that's exactly how to structure things. Now, if we cover somebody who's dabbling in MMA and their main focus is the gym. This is how I would go about programming this structure. So on the Monday, if we cover the gym stuff first, Monday's our lower body session one, Tuesday's our upper body session one. This is overall less taxing, so I've classified it as a low intensity day. Wednesday rest, Thursday, lower body number two, Friday, upper body number two. As I mentioned, we're adding high intensity days as a whole. So on the low body days, we're also doing a high, a Muay Thai BJJ wrestling at a high intensity, as well as the same concept on the Thursday. The Friday will be upper body session two and some light MMA stuff. Because Saturday and Sunday are lighter sessions, we can get away with what I would classify like a low medium intensity day and that's signified by being colored yellow. So this is a general training structure that you can utilize today. And you can make changes to the way that you're training based on these principles alone. You can make these changes instantaneously. So if you want to continue to improve your performance whilst minimizing your chance of getting injured, these are the following steps that you need to follow. 
Step one is working out what your rough maximum recoverable volume is. This allows you to train below this limit and ensure that you can consistently stay less fatigued, minimize injury risk, continue to increase performance week after week. Second would be utilizing high low periodization. So splitting your sessions up into high intensity sessions as well as low intensity sessions according to the table that we discussed previously. And finally, using those low intensity days to improve your skill acquisition, shadow boxing, partner drilling, really light work to improve your skills and technique. Because these are arguably just as important those, as those hard sparring and rolling rounds that we do throughout the week, which we love and enjoy. I can guarantee there's at least one thing that you learned today that you can implement into your training as of tomorrow. So really look at your weekly structure, really look at the way that you're training and programming things, make sure that you're training intelligently. As an MMA athlete, you need to train both smart and hard, and this allows you to do that. The way that we structured this today gives you the same tools that some of the best mixed martial artists in the world use. As I mentioned, also use the free resources that I've provided for you. I've given you over half a year of injury reduction circuits you can integrate for the rest of the year. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for future videos where I cover the exact ways to actually program gym sessions so that it benefits your MMA performance. I'll also be covering a ton of topics across a broad spectrum, all the way from injury to elite performance. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.